keyboard on a rock track. I said, don't play the, any of that Hollywood shit. <laughs> and, he, and he laughed, and, and he came in, and he could play all kinds of rock and roll. But then, you know, my guitar riffs were, were strong enough where we really didn't need it. So, we, you know, we just didn't use it, but, you know, we went in there with good intentions, and he, he played the shit out of it. Is that right? He, That's he, correct. He seems like he could be a real pounder. Oh, yeah, he pounds on art. He did. He was, his hands were bloody. You know, they, he'll probably be pissed off that he just didn't get on the record. Oh, well, maybe he'll make the 12-inch single. Yeah. <laughs> and Mick Jones is, uh, is there as well. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I've known Mick for years and years, and we toured with Foreigner years ago. And, uh, we always talked about, you know, he always liked our band, and I liked, you know, the commercials stuff that he did mm -hmm. and I just got to, finally got together and said hey want to write and, yeah let's do it you know so we played in New York City on the New Year's Eve and the next day we went to uh, or no we took the first off and then the second we went in the studio and, and one day we wrote the song and then the next day Robin came in and did some singing on it and uh, changed some vocals or did some lyrics or something so we got a good song out of it and he came and played guitar on it too he came to L.A. then played one day. Hmm, hmm. And the, uh, Nick Graham is credited as well. Uh, not on that song. Oh, uh, no, not on When You Need Someone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, he came to my house, oh, uh, probably November or October of last year. We wrote about three songs. That was not one of them. Mm hmm But, uh, we, uh, wrote some stuff together and, and then uh, he gave me a tape of this. It was a demo. It was like real rough. It just had a. Uh, it was just acoustic guitar and one voice. And I ended up changing quite a bit of it. And then you know, with Robin's voice as good as he is, you know, it's just we make it our own song. And, you know. Hmm. Uh, it, the question here is, you know, was it tough scheduling all of this? But it seems like most of this stuff is kind of incidental, or you know, when you happen to cross paths, you kind of you know put something together. You don't really. Pretty go much, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like we didn't have any big plan of it. <laughs> none of this mm -hmm. you know that's that, that's how it goes you know like I mean I could have gotten together with Mick Jones and we, maybe nothing would have happened but you know we did and something did so god it's great hmm. you know it's, and that's you know that's a day and a half's worth of work and I think to come up with something that cool you know uh, we didn't have a way to get into the be, between the sections and I sat around and I, I went and I came up with the riff da 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 you know like you know, we didn't have that part. You know, they just fell in together, you know. Everything's just, that's how it works. <laughs> hmm. If you try to explain it, you can never explain it to anybody. Yeah, you just yeah. have to be there. Yeah, right, right. Your, your old buddy, uh, Yoichi there, uh, notes that uh, Busted and uh, Had to Make You Mine seem like uh, the only quintessential cheap trick tracks on the uh, on the record. Is that an, yeah. ap is that an apt observation? Well, there's... Yeah, I guess. I don't know. They're, Cheap Trick plays on every song, so... I, <laughs> but, yeah, Bust is sort of like the, uh, you know, sort of the surrender-ish. Yeah, right. Uh, Daddy should have stayed in high school. <laughs> chestnuts we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's just a fun, dumb rock song, and it's, you know, we're a, we're sort of a fun, dumb rock band. Uh-huh. And, and then Had to Make You Mine is kind of a, the Lennon McCartney, uh, Nielsen, Xander School of rock and roll. Yeah, I think it's more like the Spinal Tap or the Ruddles. <laughs> right, exactly, the Ruddles. <laughs> and that, that one... Uh, but, you know, it's just a fun song, you know. Uh-huh. And Rob, you know, I mean, Robin sings that kind of stuff real good. It's just a nice pop song. And, like, Tom came up with the original idea for it. And, you know, throw some, like, chords in there. And, you know, it's just... It, it sounds like Cheap Trick, but it also sounds... It's reminiscent of many other things. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a question here on uh, on the, uh, the the many bands who have made sort of uh, stunning comebacks, like you know the Hearts and the Aerosmiths, and well, Alice Cooper has done pretty well also. Um, do you think you share anything in common with these guys in terms of renewed success? Well, we're still doing it. You know, I don't know. I, you know, I'm sure they don't call us and check on things. But you know, I pers you know, we personally know every one of those people, and we're just like some of the, you know. I guess, you know, we had good bands a while back, a long time ago, and and, and uh, this is what we do best. I mean, we, Cheap Trick, we didn't try to 
jump on some bandwagon or, you know, jump into dance music or, or we learn how to dance real good like Janet Jackson or MC Hammer or something like that. You know, we do what we do and we do that and we try to do a good job of it. And, and uh, you know, I think we try, to, we try to make good quality albums, you know. We don't just have one single and then the rest is just a bunch of junk. Mm-hmm. You know, we, tr- you know we, we try to make albums. So we've always been known as an album act, I think, or an album group. You know, you, you can listen to one song and it'll be a pop ballad or the next one will be a pop song the next one will be sort of a heavy thing and this one has real serious lyrics and this one has real goofy things. You know, we just, we try to, we entertain ourselves and hopefully, you know, people get a record, you know, they get to hear all kinds of different stuff. And I think that I think we do that. I think we do, you know we just try to make good songs. This song is more important, and you know you know Aerosmith could be around, but if, you know if they didn't have some good songs, uh, then this their coming back to being in power again wouldn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. You know if they were just do, just doing the oldies, but you know they're coming up you know new album loving an elevator cool you know yeah. it's like. You know, you got you got that old. It's, it's got that. It's done. It's such a cool song, but at the same time, as you know, it's a silly, goofy song. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's so you know, we're in rock bands, and you know, rock bands are not supposed to be. Uh, we're not brain surgeons. <laughs> but I think we're. I think we're. Uh, I think we're psychiatrists for for sad and tired brains. <laughs> well, also maybe for the, some some happy and energetic brains as well. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> the, the bring, us, bring us your bring us your sick and hurt and homeless. <laughs> Make them listen to our records; they'll feel better. The other guys have been accused of kind of plugging into uh, you know the high-powered producers, high-powered songwriters. You know, in the same way as say Bon Jovi, whereas uh, you guys seem to sort of uh, stick to your basics. Yeah, I mean, we sure do. Yeah. Um, actually, they uh, a couple of those guys have sort of. Uh, Attributed their renewed success to uh, disassociation with drug addiction. Um, that's that. Well, that helped. Yeah, that, that was. Uh, you know, I, I knew him. I knew him with drugs, and I knew him without. And uh, you know, basically, what I'm happy for them and anything they want to do. Uh, they were just they just abused themselves so bad that they had to do it. But, you know, they they were good. They were good when they were out of it, and they're good when they're not. You know. Yeah. Because it's it's what's inside your heart and end in your fingers and in your head. More than you know, because basically they had it in them yeah. at all times. Well, it, it, I guess that question is here because you know we would never uh, expect you guys of doing anything more serious than a couple of aspirin uh, in the morning there after a, a hangover maybe or something. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> so we just you know whatever we do, it's none of anybody's business really. But you know what we do is uh, we, we do something different than most like groups normally do because we you know we do our show and we're always completely straight we never do anything and then afterwards you know hey we're a rock band we go out and have some fun uh but but i think most of the bands that have had all these problems i mean they you know they'd wake up in the morning and start shooting up and you know smoking joints and drinking booze you know the minute they get up Mm -hmm. you know which you know you can't do that i don't believe you know i mean if you know it's at the end of the night, it's fun. You know, if you can control what you're up to. I mean, it's like, you know, being what's. Uh, some people can't drink at all. Mm-hmm. Some people, hey, if you, you know, at the end of our show, if we want to go out and hit, go to a bar and stuff, so what? But you know, when you wake up in the morning and start it, and then you know, you're, you're looking for trouble, real trouble that way. You know, you you put your you put your drugs and your booze ahead of your career mm-hmm. instead of putting your drugs and booze. In aligning it with your career. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you guys are probably one of the few bands from the Midwest to have, have uh, st- st- stuck for so long. Um, I, re- well, I, re- I really can't think of uh, any others who have sort of enjoyed the international success uh, that you well, have. Well, we're, like. we're still working at it and still enjoying what we do. I mean, I, I, yeah. the, the point I was getting at is that maybe it's a sort of, uh, you know, more sort of strict Midwestern uh, upbringing. Well, we have a work ethic and we're not afraid yeah. to work you know? yeah exactly and, exactly you know uh, that's that's it <laughs> well, when do you uh, write your music do you like just sit around and do whatever I have a chance do you sit whatever I have a chance you know I always have I usually carry a notebook